If you are afraid and flustered when you are asked to hit the stage and take the microphone, do live streams or start your own podcast, radio or TV show, you are going to learn how to level up your speaking skills today to win the room. In this session, we will discuss the strategies and techniques that will help you become a confident and a persuasive speaker. The room is the audience. So sit back, relax, and get ready to level up your speaking skills. Let's get ready to rock the room. I'm Deborah Northcutt, your speaker support concierge. Welcome to the Spectacular Speakers Lounge Show. I go live every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Our topic for today is the 10 tips that level up your speaking skills that win the room. My guest speaker today is Dr. Rixie Thompson. Now, for those of you who are out there in the audience, let me know where you're watching from. Put your name and your information in the comment box so we can connect with each other and network. And share this live with your friends, your fans, and any other speaker that needs to hear this message. Now, wait a second. I'm going to check and see if I have anybody here with us right now. Not right now. Now, if you're watching the replay of this live, make sure that you use the hashtag replay and leave your comments and questions in the box. And I will make sure that I will get back to you and answer any questions or comments that you might have. Now, I have a free gift for you, and it's a checklist of 24 support activities that I can do for you. So I'm going to bring that up. So make sure you go to bit.ly forward slash support activities. That's bit.ly support activities and download your free gift. Now today, we are going to discuss why you should research your audience how to be you and remain in your lane, and why it's important to record yourself. Now, those are just three of the R's that are going to be discussed today. Now, before I bring up my guest, let me read you her bio. Minister, evangelist, radio host, podcast host, survivorship coach, motivational speaker, consultant, prayer intercessor, and entrepreneur. Wow, that's a lot. Now, Dr. Rixie Thompson holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration, a Master's degree in Public Administration with a Consecration in Health Administration, a Master's degree in Theology, and a Doctorate degree in Divinity. She is an ordained minister and has been teaching and preaching the word of God for more than 25 years. Dr. Rixie is the radio host and podcast host for the Survivors of the Storm talk show, Connecting with Envision Broadcasting Network. Survivors of the Storm talk show is a platform for storm survivors to share their stories and give glory to God for bringing them through. Dr. Thompson is also a member of professional organization of Women of Excellence Recognized. Now let's welcome Dr. Rixie to the show. Welcome, Dr. Rixie, to the Sensational Speakers Lounge Show. We're so glad to have you here. Hello, audience. Hello, hello. <laughs> so, Dr. Rixie, I cannot wait to hear what you have to say about these 10 tips that help you win the room. So, without further ado, 
take it over. It's I'm going to give you the, the stage. It's all yours. Well, thank you, uh, Deborah. Thank you so much for having me as a guest on your fantastic show. And I do hope that I will leave the audience with something that will resonate with them that they can use and most definitely something that's going to win the room. Uh, as she did introduce, I am a radio host. I am also a podcast. I'm better known as the survivorship coach because the coaches of the breast cancers back into the stream of life. But this whole speaking uh, thing started, I guess, when I was in elementary school. I mean, I love the microphone. I love to speak. I love to win the room. I like audience to fall in love with me. And I also like to bring them something when I'm speaking. And so today we're going to be talking about those 10 R tips uh, to level up your speaking skill. You know, in the audience, we may have someone that's been speaking for quite some time. We may have somebody in the audience that may be afraid of the stage. We may have somebody in the audience that, you know, scared to even pick up the microphone. And but then, too, you may have this expert that's in the room that's been speaking for quite some time, but they yet still get butterflies in their in their stomach when they get ready to hit the stage. But this today we have 10 R tips and I'm going to dive right off into these tips. And I do hope and I know not hope. I know that you're going to be a better speaker once you finish this broadcast. We're going to be talking about 10 R's, 10 R's of those tips that's going to level up your speaking skill to make you win the room. Everybody wants to win the audience. Everybody wants to uh, have an audience that want them back. Everybody wants to have an audience that, you know, that want to uh, call you back. So today, let's go in. We're going to dive right off into this uh, broadcast right here. And then, Deborah, you can inter you can interrupt at any point. Uh, you have a question, just interrupt me at any t at any point, okay? And so I'm I just going to do that. Okay, but well, thank you so much. I'm going to dive right in, Deborah, with the first R. And the first R is that when you get ready to do a speech, and I, like I said, I've been speaking for a long time, have my own radio show, have my own podcast, and I am rocking the room. I'm rocking my audience every time I take the microphone. Uh, the first R that I'm going to give you, and it's 10 R's, and the first R that I'm going to give you is that you must research your audience. You must know who you're speaking to. You know, you have to know whether it's going to be uh, what type of event it's going to be, whether it's going to be a conference, whether it's going to be a seminar, whether it's going to be a virtual seminar, uh, whether it's going to be a commencement. What is it? What type of audience will you be speaking to? And in that research of the audience, you have to look at the age. How old are they? Are they teenagers? They're adults? They're senior citizen? You know, and then also you have to consider the race. Are they black, white, Caucasian, Mexican, or is it a mixed audience? And so you have to sort of tailor your speech around these things. So you want to do your research on your audience. And then you too, you want to consider whether that whether or not they educated, uneducated. It depends upon what type of speech you're going to prepare for. And Dr. Okay. Rexy, to interrupt yeah. you for a minute. Yeah. I find that, you know, some people, they don't do the research that you're just talking about. They just accept the speaking engagement because they're looking at the money and, right. and not, they have not researched the audience. They have not researched, are these people, do they really want to hear what I have to say? Are these the right people to be given my speech to? And when they get there and they give their speech, it doesn't resonate because it's not the right audience. Oh, yes. Because like you said, they did not do the research. So doing the research is so important. So important. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And you know what? It's sort of difficult to even write a speech if you don't know who you're talking to because mm -hmm. you don't have a purpose. You know, you don't you don't know the audience. So when you don't know the audience, you know, you may give a kindergarten speech to a, a, a room full of educated people. You don't know your audience. So I just threw that out there. I know no one's not going to do that, but I just threw that scenario out there. OK, so Deborah, I'm going to go right on to the second R. OK, the second R is that you have to it stands for readiness. You have to be ready. You know, you have to prepare. Readiness means you have to prepare. You cannot give a speech you have not prepared for that speech. Well, there's a lot entailed in um, preparing for the speech. The first thing you want to do is that you want to know, first of all, your time frame. What do you have? You have 10 minutes, five minutes, 30 minutes. You have an hour, you have two hours that lets you know how much material that you need that lets you know that how you have to uh, ha how you have to put together your speech. And so you must know the time frame. You must also know the topic. 
It's hard to write a speech if you don't know the topic. Some organization or some, um, you know, company give you a topic. And then when they don't give you a topic, you ask them the specific question. Whatever do you want me to cover? And then you can create your own topic based on the company mission or that organization mission or on the theme of that conference that they are having. So you got to know the topic. If you don't know the topic, it gives you a golden opportunity to create your own topic. And I do like to create my own topic. Sometimes when they do give me a topic, I have to do some research on it, but it has to be a topic that I have a passion for. And so that's another thing about the getting ready. You have to, when you're getting ready for a speech, you have to be sure that you're passionate about what you're getting ready to talk about. You have to be knowledgeable about what you're getting ready to talk about. And you almost have to be an expert on what you are talking about. So when you start getting ready, you have to know the purpose. And most all the time that all the speeches that I, I deliver is that they are to educate. I call them the three E's. They are to educate to empower and to entertain. So I know that one of my speeches, some one of the speeches is going to cover one of those three E's, educate, empower, or entertain. entertain. And mm -hmm. also that I want to make sure that my audience, that when I get ready, I want to make sure that my audience receives something from the speech. And when I'm getting ready, I have in mind that I'm going to give three to five benefits that that audience is going to receive from my speech. And in that way, Dr. Rixie, you're educating. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot the other two. He's Empower and entertain. And entertain. And that way you're mm -hmm. going to give the, the host's audience something that they can um, learn from. And right. that's what the host wants. And if you do that, most likely they're going to bring you back to speak at another event, which is another thing that you want to happen. Right, right. And then also, uh, uh, De is it Dr. Deborah or Deborah? No, it's just Deborah. <laughs> okay. And also, Deborah, when you're preparing for that speech, it's very important that you do an outline. Um, yes. When you do an outline of your speech, you have like the introduction, then you have like the how to, the mm -hmm. benefits, the summary, then you have a closing. So you have something to put on each one of those hidden on your outline. And so right. when you do do that outline, you also want to include Ooh, this fantastic opening, you know, something that's going to captivate the audience within the 30 second when you hit that, hit the stage or take mm -hmm. that microphone, something mm -hmm. that's going to captivate them. And I call that the uh, QQ technique. Uh, you either give them a quote or you give you ask them a question. And so I by you that. doing those two cues, you're going to get them because they're going to be wanting to know what's the answer? Where's she yeah. going with this? Or yes. something that's going to resonate with them. And then you have to build that climax to get them wondering what's going to happen at the end. I mean, what is going to be the end product? And then when you get to the end, you always want to do a recap. You want to do a summary of what you are brought to the table. You want to give them what I call the takeaway. So yes. you have, when you're preparing that speech, do your outline, do your opening, your climax, and then your ending. And you, you, you're you going to rock the room. You're going to rock the room. And you when you give them the benefits, what they came there, because see, they came there looking for something. They right. came there to be built up, to gain, to, you know, to get something from you. And guess mm -hmm. what? You're the expert. You have the answer. You're getting ready to rock the room. When you give them what they're looking for, you're getting ready to rock the room. Because they were like, wow, she gave us all these golden nuggets. Yes, that was my purpose for coming. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's move on down to the uh, third aura. We're going to move to the third aura. And it and it stands for remain in your lane. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that, Dr. Thompson? Remain I was going to ask you that. <laughs> yes. Remain in your lane means mm -hmm. that do not take an engagement that you are knowledgeable on. Do uh -huh. not take something that you're knowledgeable uh, that you uh, not don't have a passion for. Yes. I mean, somebody come and ask me how to build an airplane. Can you be a speaker on that? I'm like, no. That's not my area. <laughs> so, Deborah, that's what I mean. Stay in your lane. Yes, you're Do the right. Things you're knowledgeable on. Do the things that you have passion for. And you're going to rock the stage every single time. You're going to rock the room every mm -hmm. single time. You're going to win the room because you are that expert. And it's something that you have passion for. And it's something also that you don't have to do a whole lot of research on because right. it's in you. It is in you. Yes. So I, that's what that means, Deborah. Stay in your lane. Okay. So, oh, uh, they're looking for a speaker. Uh, let me do some research on that. But you can do, you can speak on topics that you're not familiar with, but mm -hmm. your best speak. I mean, your best uh, uh, um, audience is going to be when you speak to the audience that you know what you're talking about. That's right. Okay. Remain in your lane. Stay mm -hmm. in your lane. So don't take things. <laughs> uh, 
if it's speaking opportunity that you see, like, oh, I think I can do that. I can make shift that. Don't do that. No, no. Your confidence is not going to come through. No. Your expertise of knowledge is not going to come through. But when you speak from experience, when you have uh, experienced something, when you speak from something that you have done research and you have lived it, that's going to be your best speak. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Okay, we're down to uh, Aura, number four. The f number four Aura is stand for reach your audience. Well, how are you going to do that? How are you going to captivate that audience? Well, I say that just a mama used the two Q technique. Find a, a, a great, great quote or either open them up with some questions. Just give them one, two, three questions. Let them pause. Let them think about it and tell them to stay tuned to find out the answers uh, that's going to be revealed later on in your speech. OK, mm -hmm. and then how you reach the audience is that you got to reach them that within that first 30 seconds when you take that microphone, because you have people like, OK, what is she going to talk about? What is she all about? I mean, what can I why should I listen to her? So you have to open it up with a bang. OK, mm -hmm. and then also you want to uh, sometimes it's a good technique is to reach your audience by telling stories. And I always tell my story of my journey, my life, something dealing with my family, something that I've experienced at work. Uh, something, something that you know that that audience need to hear. Now, if you've done your research, you know what type of story to tell. If you did your research, you know you're gonna come open with that story and that experience. And, and then hold their attention. Don't don't you think, Doctor Doctor Rixie, if you come out with your story like you just yes. said, and you have a great story, it's yes. definitely gonna grab their attention and hold their attention, and they're gonna say, "I want to hear more." You know, they're yes. they're you know, and you don't want people there playing in their phones and, you know, and their right. mind is somewhere else. You want them focused on you and what you have to say. Yeah. Deborah, I want all eyes on me. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I got that microphone. I want all eyes on me. I want them to be listening like, wow, what is she going to say next? And after I did that research, I now I know what they need. Yeah. I know what they like. And I know what they're looking for. And exactly. I'm going to give it to them. I'm going to bring it to the table. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I need to know. That's what I need. Yes, give me some notes. Give, send me those notes. Can you? Do you have an ebook or do you have a book? Do you have something tangible? And you know, and that's when I usually do give them something. But anyway, that's how you reach your audience. And then also by you can reach your audience by using eye contact. You know, when you get to, when you get to the stage, find somebody that you know that look like a cheerleader that's really you hype hyping you up. Like every yeah. time you make a statement, they're like, "Yes, stay focused on that person because she's gonna be your cheerleader right. in that audience." So I like to say, I look through the audience and when I see somebody just getting excited about everything I'm saying, I'm focusing on that person mm -hmm. because she's motivating me. So make sure you have eye type eye contact with the audience. You know, I'm not gonna stay just on her, but I scan the room and see what people are looking like. See what they are. The eyes say a lot. So you want to look in their eyes and you want to see are they getting it? Do they believe it? And then also your body language. So how you reach your audience by using your body language. You know, we can use our facial expression to say a whole lot. I can use my eyes and say like, oh, I got a question. Or I can use my forehead and say like, I'm confused. You know, so you look at the body language. You watch how you use your hand gestures, you know, and all those kind of things that captivate the audience. Your emotion, the words that you speak. That's how you captivate that audience. That's how you reach that audience. Okay, so Deborah, I'm going too fast because I'm trying to get it all in the time span. And I know that you're going to have some questions at the end, but I'm trying my best to get my 10 hours in. Well, okay. You, Dr. Rixie, I just want to say before you go on, we do have a, a visitor. We do have a, someone watching. We have uh, Karan Kumar mm -hmm. from India. Welcome, Karan. Thank you for joining us today. And we also have Taria Hodge. Great afternoon, Taria. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, I know that these ladies are individual. I don't know whether they're male or female. They're ready to rock the stage. And I know that after this broadcast, you're going to have some great takeaways. You're going to go in and you're going to win the room. Yes, they are. <laughs> okay, uh, Deborah, I think I'm down to uh, R number five. I'm almost yes. like halfway. And I love to talk, so I'm trying to keep it within the time frame. But that fifth R stands for read out loud. And a lot of people think like, why, what, what, how does that tie into me winning the room or me delivering a great speech? See, when you read out loud, uh, Deborah, it builds mm -hmm. your vocabulary, you know. Yes, and some does. words, and then when you read out loud, it also uh, increases your comprehensive. 
it lets you hear what you're saying and you let you comprehend it. So when you hit the stage, you're more familiar with it and it just it just come off. It just roll off your tongue because you have read it out loud. You heard your voice. You're really talking to yourself. And so also when you read out loud, it'll allow you to hear yourself. What do you sound like? Is the words coming out right? Are you pronouncing it right? Are you, do you have high, low, you know? Do you need to elevate some word? Do you need to tone your voice down somewhere else? So reading out loud is very, 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 very important. Very and then, like I said, and it helps you to comprehend what you're saying. What did, what did, I, did I say that? Does it make sense? How do you think the audience is going to receive that? Do I need to rephrase that? Yeah, so reading out loud, that's another R. Reading out loud is very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. So we're down to R number six. And R number six stands for record yourself. And I'm saying record yourself is a little audio. And the audio, I'm talking about the audio record because sometimes you say record, it means like a video. But you need to do that audio record. The audio record lets you focus in on your voice. The video, you're looking at, you're hearing your voice and you're looking at yourself. And so does, you're not paying fully attention. But the audio record makes you pay specially attention to your voice. Mm -hmm. And it also lets you hear yourself. And then now you can analyze that speech. You can go in and sort of like dissect it, add to it, take away, empower there, bring something else in. But when you, when you speak and you're not, and you're speaking just to yourself, but when you play it back, you hear yourself. And so that means that when you record yourself, you have an opportunity to analyze your speech. And then also you can listen to that recording and you can say, well, I'm speaking too slow here. I didn't put enough emphasis here. I might need to speed that up. I might need to highlight that. I might need to pause right there. So the recording is so, 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 so important. And then also that now that with the new technology, you can hit, you can download recording uh, apps and you can record, you can put your pitch in. There's so many things that you can do with these recording apps now that they have. Cool. And so I recommend that you do not have a recording. It's free. Just download a recording app and you can go in. It can change the word for you. It can give you, it creates a, a, a uh, 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 a thesaurus for you, well, a word that you need to replace it with. They replace that with a similar word. So you have some tools out there, just not just a plain recorder. You have some uh, great, great, great uh, audio recording systems out there now for free, for free. <laughs> well, would so you, you recommend any specific tool, Dr. Dr. Rixie, or is it just what you feel comfortable with or, you know, that you would choose as a recording tool? Um, well, any, any recording tool, really. Uh, the one that I use, uh, I think it's called Vin, uh, Vinimo. Um, I don't even have the right pronunciation for the word, but Vinimo? I use it so much. I, I use it so much. I can't even, I don't even know the name of it because I, I, I don't know. It's, but I have one and I do use it quite often. And I want to say it's uh, Vini, Vimino. Is, v is it Vimo? I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead. Well, I put it in the comment section when I finish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to mislead anyone, okay? Okay. okay. All righty. Okay, so R, the six R would stand for record yourself. Mm -hmm. And then number seven is to rehearse. Rehearse. Well, rehearse is just a little bit different than reading to yourself. And I'm talking about just not rehearsing, but rehearsing with a family member, rehearsing with a friend, rehearsing with a small audience. So they can give you some positive feedback. Right. You know, what? sometimes we think that we are good and we look in the mirror, we practice and all of that. There's some flaws that we didn't see that they see. So now they are our makeshift audience and they're going to like, oh, that was some great information. I, I missed that point. You was talking too fast right there. What do you mean by that? You need to find somebody that's going to critique what you're saying and to give you some positive feedback. And, and so I that's. Yes, honest right. Yes. Not a friend mm -hmm. that's gonna go along with girl that you rocked out, and then knowing all the time that she needs to go back and do something different in certain areas of her speech. So it's very important that you rehearse with a family member, uh, rehearse with a small audience. And I use my husband all the time, <laughs> and he's very honest. Good. Yes, he is. He's very honest, and uh, and I, like I said, then sometimes I do like a Zoom. I really mm -hmm. video caught myself on a Zoom, like as though I was doing it to an audience. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe I should have stood up there. Now, maybe should I should have, I made a, you know, put a, a high point on that. You know, so it's very, very important that you rehearse uh, with someone else other than yourself. 
out because you know you gonna think you are good <laughs> you gonna think that you have mastered it i mean you know but there's someone else can listen can listen to you and watch your body language and tell right. you that you know the way you stand and the way you hold in your hand uh you didn't look like you was uh a sheer on that point based on your facial expression. And so those kind of things right there. So you're looking for somebody to give you some positive feedback. And that's what I call rehearse, rehearse with a friend, rehearse okay. with an audience. And so, so you can have that positive feedback. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and like she said, honest, it got to be honest. Can't be a friend that's going to go along with you and exactly. know it all the time that you need to. And then it's also going to give you that opportunity to polish your presentation. You know, polish me to put the final touch on it. You may have perfected it to a certain degree, but when you when a friend critique you, you're like, yeah, I need to add this. So it's giving you an, a, a opportunity to polish that um uh, presentation. And then it also gives you a, a another opportunity to get familiar with the material that you're going to present. Practice, 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 rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsal. And so, yes. And so when you perform it in front of that audience or that friend, that's another opportunity to take away some of that fear, take away some of that doubt and let you know how well you are familiar with your content. Exactly. Okay. There's no such thing as too much practice when it comes to giving a speech. I mean, yeah. you should know your speech inside and out, backwards and forwards, because it gives you confidence mm -hmm. you know, to get up there and to give your speech, you know, knowing that you have practiced it and you're very familiar with it. Instead of yeah. just trying to get up there and wing it, like, you know, something right. you might want to do. Right. And, you know, it's just sometimes I go to bed thinking about the speech and it's in my head. And I want to be so familiarized with my content that, I can go up on that stage blindfold, no outline, no notes, you know, mm -hmm. and some speech, I do have outlines, so I do have notes, and then some is just like, it's embedded in me. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the kind that I have passion for. Those are the kind that I, I'm speaking out of experience. Mm -hmm. And I do like it. I just like, I'm ready. I'm ready for this because I want the audience to know this. I want to, the audience to know how to do this. And I, I know that they're going to come away uh, from my speech educated, entertained, and empowered. Mm -hmm. I know they're going to be all of that. I know that they're going to be ready because I feel good about the speech. I feel mm -hmm. good about the topic that I'm going to speak on. And I know that I know the content because it's coming from the inside of me. Okay. 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 We're down to the eighth R. And we, I know we're going to probably have some discussion after this. So I'm trying to get my little 10 R's in. So if we want to go back and retouch on some of those uh, R's and ask questions about those R's, we can go back and talk about them as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The eighth R is a reciting in the mirror. And I think I had a recitation. You know, when we was in high school, uh, I think like maybe fourth or fifth grade or maybe even earlier than that, we have to recite the Easter poem at church or you have to recite uh something out of the book that you read. So recite means that you have to memorize and you have to stand in front of an audience and do it. And reciting in the mirror is just a little bit different than uh, seeing yourself on a video. You see yourself on a video, it's after you have de you've delivered your speech, right? But right. in a mirror, it's, it's live time. You're looking at yourself in the mirror while you speak and you can see your body language you can see how you can change it then. You can see, you can make some adjustment while you're yet speaking. So it's so important to recite it. Know enough where you don't have to, let's say for, for instance, and I say recite means this to sort of rememberize some very important key part of your speech so people can know that you're not reading that from a piece of paper. It's mm -hmm. coming from the heart. It's coming from the soul. It's coming from experience. So that part that you already know, I mean, recite it. And then you, when you look in the mirror, you need to make a body language that coincide with what you have just spoke. And when you memorize something, they like, yes, yeah, she knew that. I felt that. And then you have the body language to go along with it. See, on the on the video recording, you can you can. You, you you did it and you can't change it. But in the mirror, that's why I said recite in the mirror, you can say it one time and you don't like the body language. You say, oh, let me change. Let me put my hands on my hip right here. So that's the <laughs> difference. <laughs> yeah, let me hold my hand up. Let me make it sure that they hear this and let me point to them. You know, yeah. so you can change it in the mirror, but on the video, it's recorded and you can't. And then you can see right. what gesture that fits you the best in the mirror. <laughs> so right. reciting in the mirror is me that you can change while you're speaking you can change movement body language you can see you you can look at your posture do i need to stand up straight do i need to sit do i need to walk with this point 
So the mirror is very important. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, and a lot of people think like, okay, well, I'm just going to stand here, hold the microphone. The audience is looking for gestures. They're looking for connection. How are you going to connect with them? And your body language says so much. But when you're doing a video uh, recording, like I said, it's finished. You're done. You did your recording. Mm -hmm. But in the mirror, you can speak it and you can change it and see, well, how did this look? How did that look? So it's very important that you recite it in the mirror. And it's very important that you memorize some of those key points. Speak it like you own it. <laughs> speak you it like you would. Speak yeah. it like you, yeah, I mean, like, you know what? I, this is it. You know, you got to do this. But when you're reading it, or you, you're thinking about it, and you're not saying it with power and authority, they're like, oh, she said a statement. I don't know what that means. But when you <laughs> speak it and you own it, they're like, oh, yes, I got this. You know, so there's a difference. There's a great difference. Um, yes, it is. And so that reciting in the mirror can bring over that point in a powerful way by your body language, by the way you uh, carry your eyes, your head, your motion, the way you stand. You may you might want to walk on a point like, OK, I'm coming. I'm coming to you with this point. You know, you, I want you to get it. I mean, you know, when you point to the audience. They're like, oh, she's talking to me. Yes, yeah. I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> so you are owning that audience. <laughs> yes, take over that audience because you mm -hmm. want them to hear and let them know when the, when let them know by your body language what's important. Yes, I, said, I, I want your attention right here. I want mm -hmm. you to get this right here. Mm -hmm. So yes, so re that reciting in the mirror, uh, the mirror is too part of that. The mirror plays a part, and you reciting it. Because like I said, you want something to come across powerful, you need to memorize that portion. Not read it, but memorize it and recite it like you own it. Okay? I yeah, yes. I agree. Yes. Okay, so we're down to aura uh, number nine. Aura number nine. And mm -hmm. it says revive. Reviving the vocal cord. And I have, uh, Deborah, I have like two prayer ministry. I have prayer in pajamas. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing it for like eight years uh six o'clock every wednesday eight or uh, six o'clock we have like these 60 or 70 80 people on this conference call in the prayer room wow. and so i am the prayer warrior and so i have to get on there and sometimes i have to pray for 30 minutes straight and then sometimes i have uh prayer warriors that come in and assist me on praying on certain topics but okay. i have, to have this voice right every single time I get on the microphone. I don't want to come in hoarse. I don't want to come in talking like I just woke up, which I, I just woke up. <laughs> I mean, four o'clock in the morning, I had to get up at four o'clock uh, yeah. uh, sometime to to get to retrieve, to retrieve prayer requests. And then five o'clock, I'm in the prayer room praying an hour before I get on the prayer line. And then when I get on the prayer line and I began to pray, I want my voice right. So you want to revive those vocal cords. So you don't want to get on the stage a horse or whispering just barely can't hear you. You have a low tone and your bo your body, I mean, your voice is trembling. So you have to vitalize those vocal cords. So right before you hit the stage, you want to take in some deep breath, breathe in, breathe out. You do it about 10 or 12 times. And then you want to relax. You want to relax before you go on the, st on the stage. And then you want to most definitely hydrate, hydrate, hydrate before you hit the, the stage. Not too much because you'll be on the stage wanting to use the bathroom, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> or take enough water to hydrate those vocal cords. Yes. And so you want to get plenty of rest at night, you know, because it has a big effect on how you sound, how you sound. And so, yes. And like I said, and then that evening, I have another prayer section at six o'clock that evening. I don't pray so hard that morning. That evening, I got to come back again. I got to pray again. Oh and then uh, even when I'm doing my recording on my radio show and on my podcast, oh my God, <laughs> I have to, uh, on my radio show, now you don't see, I don't see myself. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's sort of hard. When you don't have, you can't see uh, your audience and you speak into the audience. And so mm -hmm. you have to have a voice that projecting the way you feel. Right. And I want that voice projecting the way I feel. And I always want to feel empowered, confidence, and upbeat. Mm -hmm. I don't care what I don't care if I'm going through COVID, I'm sick or out of the hospital. I had to come on and let the audience know I am fired up. I'm ready. And I got something I want you to hear. And so you want to keep those vocal cords where that you can project who you are and your feeling that you have in the inside. And I hope that always a positive and an upbeat uh, uh, feeling. But because you know what? Your voice projects uh, how you feel. 
It exactly. really sucks. So you can, I can get on here and sound real slow, speaking slow. Uh, and that means I'm not feeling well. I mean, mm -hmm. Something's wrong with me. And the audience going to tune me out. So revive those vocal cords. And so you have to hydrate and do those breathing techniques before you hit the stage or take that microphone, whether it be on a podcast or radio, revive those vocal cords, okay? And I want to say uh, on that, uh, Dr. Rixie, you say revive the vocal cords and hydrate, mm -hmm. but make sure when you are hydrating, especially when it comes to water, do not drink cold water. No. Because that can constrict your vocal cords. You want to make sure that whatever you're drinking is warm, you know, warm water, right. room temperature water, or right. hot tea or something like that to revive those vocal cords also. Very good. Very good. I'm glad you brought mm -hmm. that out because I always have a cup of green tea. As a matter of fact, I have some here. <laughs> I always have a cup of green tea right beside me when I'm speaking uh, on the microphone if I'm at home. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, when I'm going out, I have to prepare those vocal cords before I hit the stage or take that microphone. Mm -hmm. okay? so and it's so things. hard when you talk about meditate, relax, you know, you have so much tension built up, especially if you're a new speaker or if you don't have to be a new speaker, just speaking period. Sometimes it's just your, your confidence, your nerves are all over the place and you definitely have to do what works for you to get yourself uh, relaxed, which is mm -hmm. meditate or exercise, you know, whatever, right. go for a walk before you get yep. ready to speak. But yep. you're right, you need to get yourself calm and in that calm space where you can give your best speech. Right, right. But you know what the biggest thing, how to, the biggest way how to relax yourself is know what you're talking about. There you go. Yeah, I agree. I you agree. be so confident and you be so ready. Like I'm ready. I yeah. know that this is going to work. I know this is what they need to hear. Your confidence and your preparation. And, you know, when you know that you have prepared, you have Get you have given it a hundred percent. You know mm -hmm. that you're ready, and you don't have that tension. I don't care how big the audience is. I have been, I have spoken uh, uh, some big congregations, some big conferences, some big seminars, and all that. When I hit that stage, look, I'm Rixie. I know my <laughs> stuff. I'm ready. I'm ready to rock the room. I'm ready for you to receive it, and uh, they do. They receive well because they see my confidence and that I do know. Because you're gonna always have somebody in the audience that's gonna question you. So you mm -hmm. better be ready. Oh, yeah. yeah, you have those people that have questions like, okay, well, who made her the expert? I am the expert. I come to give you some advice. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. So that confidence really relaxes you. If you're not halfway prepared, you're going to have a more nervousness about yourself then. But when you are prepared, you know, you know that you know, oh, mm -hmm. you're going to walk on that stage like you own it. You're going <laughs> to rock it too. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. And you will. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So, um, okay. So we're down to our last R. And I do know that, Jerry, you probably have some questions about some of the R's that we can elaborate on it just a little bit more. Okay. Um, this last R. But I did want to get them all in. So I don't feel great about myself. <laughs> I got the 10 R's in. And then the last R stands for relax. We talked about it just a little bit just then. But you have to be relaxed. The R's cannot see you uh, nervous. Right. The artist cannot see you not confidence. You know, you're just like, I don't know. I'm not sure on that. So the artists don't need to see none of that. The artists need to see that you're relaxed, that you're in your zone, that you are passionate about what you're talking about, you're knowledge that knowledgeable about what you're talking about. They need to even see that you are the expert. <laughs> they have hired exactly. the right person. They have hired the right person. The right person has the microphone. So they have to see that you are that person. And they're going to pay attention to you. They're going to take notes from you. They're going to want to, want to hear more from you just because of your confidence and the information that you gave them. But you right. got to be prepared. You have to be ready. So you're going to relax and you're going to get rid of all that anxiety. You're going to get rid of all that stress. And, you know, and then sometimes I don't even look at my speech the night before I prepare it. <laughs> I lay it aside like two days before. You know, and I, then I said, I'm not going to even look at it anymore. I'll be that confidence. Like if I go look at it one more time, I'm going to add something. I'm going to look at it one more time. I'm not sure on this spot. No, when I lay it down two nights before the events, I'm ready. Because the rest of those days, I want to relax. I want to be sitting by the pool, drinking <laughs> uh, you know, cold iced tea. I want to be doing something relaxing, soothing, and not mm -hmm. focusing on that speech. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, relaxation is very important. And then, too, you know, and then it's time to rock it. 
that orchestra, it's time to rock the stage, you all. It's time to rock it. And then it's ready, to, you're ready to, you know, bring forth that energy into the room. And right. so that's how I say you're going to win the room. When you do these 10 hours, you prepare, you know, you know your audience and, you know, you reciters, you rehearsal, all those are you remain in your lane, stay in your lane. Don't go get something that you're not familiar with. Mm -hmm. You're getting ready to rock the room. You're getting ready to win the room. Yes, you are. Okay. Yes, so you are. Those are the 10 hours. And those were great, Dr. Rixie. I loved everything that you talked about. But I do have a question. When you said the room is the audience, can you go into a little more detail about what do you mean about the room is the audience? Well, the room is the, it's the audience. I mean that because when I had said rock the audience, uh -huh. uh, I wanted to take it to another level. We know the audience is sitting in the room. I want your speech to be so dynamic that it just really rock the room. We in the room. That means that not just the people, but the whole atmosphere. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so the audience is in the room, but I wanted to go like, okay, wow, what's going on over there? So this is how you win the room. Wonderful. Well, you know, I really don't have any more questions unless my um, viewers have any questions. I don't see any questions in the comment box. So I guess we're good. Um, but what I'm going to to say, Dr. Rick says, how can people stay in contact with you? Well, they can follow me on my Facebook page. I think I put it in the comment section, but it's um, at Dr. Rixie Thompson. You know, that's www.facebook.com. And then mm -hmm. my handle is um, at D-R-R-I-X-I-E. The last name is Thompson. And then you can connect with me also on my Instagram. That's at Survivor Coach, at Survivor Coach. That's on my Instagram uh, as well. And then, you know, you can always send me an email. That's rtgotfavor at yahoo.com. Okay. Well, I did put your link to your Facebook group in the in the comments. So, you know, you're welcome to, to connect with Dr. Rixie on her Facebook page. And I would say, make sure that you listen to her podcast show, Surviving the Storm. I listened to it and it is excellent. I mean, there's people that give their life stories, things that happen to them and how they came through. And it's it's just a wonderful podcast show. So I would definitely say, make sure you tune into Surviving the Storm. And your podcast show can be found on which podcast channels? Uh, uh, the, the, actually, Deborah, the show is called Survivors of the Storms. It was Survivors of the oh. Storm, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. It's Survivors of the Storm. Uh -huh. And this show is uh, consists of survivors that have actually um, been gone through a storm, came out mm -hmm. a winner, came out victorious. And a lot of the storms that we go through in life uh, have placed us in the position that we are in now. Without the storm of breast cancer, you know, I opened it up a while ago that I am the survivorship coach of coaching and pink shoes ministry, where I coaches other breast cancer survivors back into the stream of life. That storm have led me to start the prayer ministry that I started, to start the breast cancer ministry that I started. But um, this platform, Survivors of the Storm, is also a platform for uh, authors can come on and promote their book. Uh, they can promote their event their business. They can share their storm. And nine out of 10 times, that storm is the storm that causes them to write that book. That storm is something that causes them to uh, start that business. So they had to go through a process. They came through victorious and that's, how, that's what led them to the success that they have now. So the storm is a testimony, but it's also a platform to promote authors, books, events, business. So you have one of those and you have a storm. Hey, Hey, I, I'm going to put my link in. I'm going to share my link with you too, Deborah. But they okay. can guess, the guests can come on to be a guest. I mean, your audience can come in to be a guest on my radio and my podcast show. Oh, uh, they yes. can complete that link and they can, you know, set up a date and time and we will get you on the air. We will definitely get you on the air. I uh, love that. Yes, and so I that link, I'm going to put it in the, it's uh, www. Uh, you know, the little tag is um, www.envisionbroadcasting.com forward slash survivors of the storm. Okay. I'm going to put that in right now. It's envisioned. Broadcasting. Yeah. So put the little, put the little, uh, the little things before Deborah, the HTTPS oh, okay. slash slash. And so that way they can just click on it and then they can go right into uh, the, the website. Is it HTTP with an S on the end or just yeah, HTTP? With an S on it. With an okay, S. Semicolon forward slash forward slash 
uh, and then envisioned with the ed e n v i s i o n e d envisioned broadcasting net uh, dot com envisioned broadcasting network dot com uh, uh, just it dot com envisioned broadcasting dot com yes okay so I'm putting this in here I'm getting ready to and then it's and then it's forward slash Deborah forward slash survivors of the storm survivor okay. Survivor hat uh, dash r dash dash the dash the storm. <laughs> it's a dash in between. So but you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna share it later on with you. Okay. 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 Yeah, because I just put in I just put envisionbroadcasting.com. But if you can give me the correct link, I will make sure that I put it in the comments for people to join you or become a guest on your podcast show. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Most definitely. And then, like I said, it's a golden opportunity. And I do extra promotion on your book, on your uh, business, on your event. So when you do come in, you have an opportunity to buy a promotion package. Whereas that I create videos for your business. I create flyers for your business. Wow. The radio station start airing your business and your book. So you gain benefits by just being on the show. <laughs> definitely. Most de yes. I didn't know you did all that. Oh, yes. I knew <laughs> Wow. Yes. So you're definitely gain, gaining a lot of benefits by coming on your show. That's uh, correct. Lot. Well, Dr. Rixie, I don't have anything else. I mean, is there anything else that you'd like to add before we um, end the show? No, I'm just grateful that to, uh, that to have this opportunity to share the platform with you, mm -hmm. uh, Deborah, on this sensational speaker line show. I feel so honored. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I'm very honored to have you as a guest. Thank you so much. And on that note, uh, everyone, make sure that you um, join her Facebook group. And I'm going to put the link into her uh, podcast show when I get the correct link from Dr. Rixie. And uh, make sure that you click on that link and become a guest on her show. And if you do not become a guest, make sure that you listen to the show yes. because it's a wonderful, wonderful podcast show. I cannot say that enough. I listen to a lot of podcast shows and Dr. Rixie has a wonderful podcast show. So thank you so much for coming on the Sensational Speaker Lounge show, Dr. Rixie. And thank you, Taria, for joining us today. And on that note, I will say bye, everyone. And thank you again. Everybody have a great day. Okay. I want to end the book.